Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and today as you can see behind me we have the Ford Explorer that we're going to be taking the 5.0 liter V8 out of to put inside the 4.6 Mustang. Basically the 5.0 is out which is the first part of my video and I'm going to have several parts to this build. Uh, it actually is going to be carbureted so all of the fuel rail, the injectors, even this manifold is not going to be used again. We have a carbureted manifold that we're going to be using. Alright, so we finally got the engine out. That's all we're gonna be doing for today. Only thanks to this skeedy strong person right here, Whitson. Um, so, 4.6 is out. Next video, we're gonna be prepping for the 5.0 to go in. Hope you're gonna edit that shit out. So it's been a long hard day but the 4.6 was out from the last video. Now we have the 5.0 sitting inside the uh, Mustang. Um, we had issues with the flywheel where the box wasn't going over it so we're gonna have to order the right flywheel. Somehow I got the wrong one. I have a clutch for it, just need, a, need the proper flywheel for it. So we're gonna call it quits for today. We gotta order the right parts and then we'll get back to it. I can't even do any of the fueling or the hooking up of anything in the motor because we're gonna pull it back out, attach the trans to it, and then put it back in. So that'll be it for today. So we have the motor suspended above the Mustang, which is extremely unsafe. So I just was mounting this um, brand new flywheel, mount the clutch and the pressure plate, then I'll pull it out of the vehicle, put it down on this tire, 
put the trans on it and then put it back in the car i have the t5 onto the 50 now this is the sketchiest thing i think i've ever done in my life i just uh, i didn't have any help with me today so i couldn't get the motor away from the car with the lift because uh, we're on rocks and stuff i couldn't pull it away and i believe that wheel for the lift down there um just jammed in that position so i only could have lift the engine out so we have the box on uh, we put the flywheel on we put the clutch pressure plate put the box on put the starter on wired it up and now i'm gonna try to spin the motor and trans around and sit it down in the car all right guys uh yeah, as you can see it is freaking pouring i got the t5 in i got the 5.0 back in i had to remove the motor mounts just to get a uh, get it to fit but um I just have to jack up the T5 so that I get the motor level and then hoist up the engine at the same time so that I could get those motor mounts back in. The biggest issue today was that I didn't have any help to help me to do two to three things at the same time but hopefully I have that help when I come back tomorrow and we can get this thing bolted up then we can start working on the fuel, fire and uh, drive shaft, other little small things, radiator but this is all for today because we're going to be using a stock fuel pump for an EFI which is way too high of a pressure to use on this car with a carburetor so this is going to step down that high pressure to a low pressure and like I said guys you're gonna uh, I'm gonna get done with making this uh, work and I'm gonna meet you guys outside all right guys uh, just got done installing the fuel pressure regulator I was going to install it on the face here of the shock tower but the headers would have been right on it so I put it on the front here uh, this will be the feed line that comes from the hard feed hose right here and then it's a returnless carbureted system so I have this side of the pressure regulator blocked off and then we have the feed going into the carburetor we are going to be installing this HEI distributor which is needed to run a carbureted setup and these are the instructions what I'm going to show you is how to properly read instructions yeah that's how you do that so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this hood we're going to set this motor to top dead center uh, on that number one cylinder and we're going to stop this distributor I'm going to be installing a few switches somewhere in the center console um, I was thinking about just taking this out, the coin part, and installing the switches right at the back. So I'm going to drill some holes in the back of this, install my button, my two switches. Alright guys, I've been going at it all day, but I finally got it wired up. This might not be the desired place for it because the stick has to come up here, but I might relocate the stick further back uh, using a bracket. And this should be fine. This one is for fuel, spark, and then you start it. But None of these get power unless the key is on. What we can do is turn on the spark, turn on the fuel. We're gonna need a gauge that comes with a sensor and then we're going to need this pipe that comes with the proper hole size and clamps to hook up the sensor. starts out at 104 
It has a red warning light uh, whenever the system, I guess, gets too hot. This is your old style uh, 2G alternator. You can tell by the clips. You can tell by the external fan. And now I'm going to be showing you the new um, 3G alternator that I got for. This is the newer style 3G alternator. Pretty much the same mounting um, bolts. The wiring is going to be slightly different. I'm going to show you that in a moment. But I'm going to get this installed. I believe there's going to be some type of modification that I have to cut out here to get this to fit. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to do it and then show you guys what I've done. Now we're going to start it up and see how it runs. key out this is gonna be pretty loud so I'm gonna turn it off uh, after I know that everything is running pretty good Ah. Go, go, go! 